tuned to uncover why eating a tuna fish sandwich is no different than eating a wild tiger steak? Discover the incredible parallels between the world of business and reef cleaner fish, and why everything I thought I knew about fish was in fact wrong. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another episode. I'm Rebecca and this is a series called Green Pages in which I unpack incredible knowledge from books, all with a common theme situated around our planet, our beautiful planet. So whether it's rewilding, sustainable travel, sustainable living, nature, understanding better our relationship with it, climate change, you name it, we cover those topics. And if you're interested in that, you've made a great choice by being here. This week I finished reading the book What a Fish Knows, The Inner Lives of Our Underwater Cousins by Jonathan Balcom, written in 2016. I picked this one up following watching the highly important and disturbing documentary Sea Spiracy from Netflix. If you haven't watched that, I recommend checking it out. So coming up next, we're going to explore together the three biggest takeaways from this book and how reading it might actually change the way you think about fish forever. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button just below, it's the best way to support this series. And a quick mention to our sponsor who has helped making this all possible. The first key takeaway, why everything I thought I knew about fish was in fact wrong. So let's kick this first takeaway off with that common misconception that goldfishers have three second memories. I don't know what the species did to earn it, but the goldfishers legendary three second memory still lurks in pop culture and in advertising. So it might surprise you to learn that goldfishers can in fact be clicker trained, which is the exact same approach and technique used on dogs. We don't tend to associate dogs with being dim or slow or having three second memories. So I wonder why fish? And here's the interesting part. It's not just they don't have three second memories. In fact, there are countless experiments, lots of them documented in this book, that prove that fish not only have memories, but they have the remembrance of things long past. The assumption that fishes are at the dim end of the animal spectrum are challenged over and over again in this book, and that's what makes it so fascinating, to the point where you wonder where on earth this myth of these three second memories or not much memory ever came from. So here was another revelation. Tool use was long believed to be unique to humans and it's actually only in the last decade that scientists have begun to appreciate and understand behaviour beyond mammals and birds. And it was in this book that I learnt a professor from the University of California is thought to be the first scientist to film a fish demonstrating tool use the lack of detectable facial expressions and the appearance that they almost are mute or make very few sounds compared to us noisy humans, I think seemingly adds more to our misunderstanding of them and makes them so easy to dismiss. From discovering through the pages of this book by Jonathan that fish can demonstrate compassion, they have feelings of joy and have the remembrance of things long past, that maybe like me, that this book will help you realise everything you thought you knew about fish was in fact wrong. The second key takeaway from this book was learning about social contracts and the incredible parallels between the business world and the reef cleaner fish. So let's imagine for a moment that you own a barber shop or a street side cafe, your choice. And you're going to rely on both customers that are just passing by and drop in and clients and customers that you have built loyalty and trust with that come every week or every month. And it isn't exactly rocket science. If you deliver a shoddy haircut in your barbershop or whether you deliver some bad food in your street side cafe, you can't really expect those clients to keep coming back and using you time and time again. Everything I just described is not that much different from the social contracts we see on the reef. The cleaner client symbosis of fishes is one of the most complex and sophisticated social systems of any animal, not just fishes. So here's how it works. The cleaner fish approaches the client and picks over the client's bodies, removing parasites, dead skin, algae. 
The client benefits from a almost a spa treatment and the cleaners get fed, pretty simple. But some of those clients are regulars who are residents to the reef. Others are visitors just passing through. On page 129, Jonathan shows us that even on a slow day in the office, cleaner rashes actually can serve as hundreds of clients. In fact, a study on the Great Barrier Reef found that a single RAS serviced an average of 2,297 clients each day. Beat that on a busy day in the office or in your street side cafe. These complex and intricate relationships between the fish on the reef are not random. They are built and cultivated through trust that takes months and weeks, just like us in the business world. It's no different. And fish are not often associated with having a personality or having memories or even having the ability to recognise individuals. But through the pages of this book, Jonathan illustrates so well that fish aren't merely alive, they have lives. The third and final key takeaway from this book is why eating a tuna fish sandwich is no different from eating a wild tiger steak. Don't be under any disillusion. When you're eating fish, you're eating wildlife. And Jonathan quotes Sylvia on page 227. She puts it this way. Think of everything in the fish market as bush meat. These are the eagles, the owls, the lions, the tigers the snow leopards and rhinoceroses of the ocean. Like tigers, tunas are big. The largest Atlantic bluefin tuna outsize the largest tiger. A tuna is as fast as an ambushing tiger. Lying at the very top of the food chain, like tigers, tunas are charismatic, what we call apex predators. Apex predators have a major impact on the entire ecosystem and tuna relate to almost entirely every bit of life that exists within the aquatic ecosystem. It's probably not new to you that tuna fish are in big, big trouble and their populations are down between 85 and 96% since 1960. So in short, we're decimating them. So how could this book possibly change you forever? Well, there's still a lot of people out there that still have this perception and understanding that fish, eating fish is good for you. Newsflash, fish flesh is the most contaminated of all foods. That's pretty heavy stuff, so I'm gonna repeat that. Fish flesh is the most contaminated of all foods. From mercury to neurotoxins, DDT, PCBs, prescription drugs, you'll be tucking into a tasty array of harmful chemicals with each and every delicious bite. Of the 125,000 chemicals created since the Industrial Revolution, 85,000 have been found in fish flesh. And that's not even mentioning the microplastics that you could be ingesting with each and every bite. And the sad realisation that fish flesh is the most contaminated of all foods this book, I think, might just influence your diet. Some final thoughts on the incredible book, What a Fish Knows by Jonathan, is that there are countless books out there about, written about fish, about, you know, their ecology, what, you know, how do you catch them? My God, how many books there are about that and magazines. But this book is very different. And it's not a conservationist message, which is what you might think. It actually just gives a voice to the fish. I think we've been preconditioned as humans to think of fishes as objects, but actually once you uncover and unpack how they have feelings and personalities and remembrance of things long past, it totally changes and you see them in a totally different light. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have and I hope you can join me for next time as I unpack the book Rewild, The Art of Returning to Nature by Nick Baker. The verb to rewild is usually associated with the reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone or the lynx cat to the Scottish Highlands. But what is it to rewild ourselves? Well, find out next time.